Next, and we begin our team coverage with KTLA 5's Stephen Chase in DeVore. Stephen. Sharon, sure, Micah, boy, it is quite windy out here, but you know, here in DeVore, you can't help but to pick up the scent of fire and smoke. Everything the firefighters have been battling since about 11 o'clock this morning. The fire, as you said, Sharon, sure, spread to nearly 375 acres and then stopped there along with traffic. Take a look at this traffic nightmare. It's a little bit better than bumper to bumper, but about an hour or so ago, drivers weren't going anywhere. We are stuck. I've been driving around trying to get on the freeway. I live in Hesperia. My kids is waiting on me. Not too happy about this standstill, but with this Cajon Pass wildfire jumping over lanes of traffic along Interstate 15, it had to be shut down in both directions. That's correct. Both sides of the freeway were affected by the fire, which is why the freeway had to be shut down. The, the smoke was very thick, and obviously that could have led to potential accidents. Investigators believe the fire started just north of the Kenwood exit on Interstate 15. Firefighters from the U.S. Forest Service, Cal Fire, San Bernardino County Fire, and several other agencies responded. The fire is now 5% contained. Right now it's all handwork. It's in steep terrain, a lot of heavy brush, um, no structures in the immediate area. Um, so it's just going to be a lot of handwork. As I want to get through. I want to go home. We tried every which way. Can't get through. <laughs> Trying to get home from school and work was a nightmare for these commuters. So they pulled over and waited for hours. Oh, I guess we're just waiting to get through because we live just up the hill and we have to go pick up my husband. So we thought we'd pull over instead oh. of just driving back and forth and wasting gas. Okay, so the good news is Interstate 15 is once again moving. Two lanes in both directions, northbound and southbound directions, are now open. And more good news coming out of the San Bernardino County Fire Department. They tell me that by uh, tomorrow at 6 o'clock, this fire should be 100% contained. That's the very latest here in DeVore. Stephen Chase, KTLA 5 News. A very windy DeVore, Stephen. Thank you so much. And we want to continue yeah. our team coverage right now with Scott. Stephen Chase live at the scene in Hollywood for us with more tonight. Stephen. And Micah, there's a message behind tonight's vigil honoring Andre Lowe. With the suspect now off the street, the family shifting its attention to what can be done to prevent another innocent life from being taken by gun violence. Hey, Steph. Hey, Rick. You know, there are more than one and a half billion Christians all across the world celebrating Christmas today. And although they may speak different languages from east to west, their traditions are pretty similar. Christmas trees, festive holiday lights, going to mass. But some traditions are quirkier than others. And KTLA's Stephen Chase live in Duarte for us, Stephen. Hey, Micah and Cher, we're told that workers here at Walmart plan to walk off the job on perhaps the biggest shopping holiday of the year and perhaps affecting lots of shoppers out there. Now, Walmart workers that we talked with tonight say they don't know what else they can do to get Walmart to listen up. They put me in a tough kind of corner. Chris Nihos works at this Walmart in Duarte. He's just been told he's one of the thousands of employees who will have to end their Thanksgiving holiday early to come and work. I don't want to work on Thanksgiving. I want to be with my family, you know, my girlfriend. Walmart is letting shoppers excited about Black Friday deals find them earlier by opening up the doors Thanksgiving night at 8 o'clock. Protesting outside the Walmart in Eastvale. Earlier today, employees angry in part because of the holiday work plan took their frustrations to the street. In a separate protest near a Mariloma Walmart warehouse, Riverside County deputies arrested six people for blocking traffic. At our request, Walmart responded with this statement. In part, it reads, this is just another exaggerated publicity campaign aimed at generating headlines to mislead our customers and associates. But many customers stopping to talk with us tonight aren't convinced. I mean, it's just cutting to your family time and your folks' time, your uh, friends' time. Carlos Silos thinks both the retailer and shoppers should think twice about moving up Black Friday into what's now being called Gray Thursday. Those people have to settle down. <laughs> Others say workers should have known what they were signing up for. If you come into a workplace knowing that that's an agreement you might have to make, then that's your choice to have that job. Amanda Seha says when she stays home Thanksgiving with her family, she hopes her actions speak loudly. It's kind of funny because the companies can do whatever, and if nobody shows up, you think they're going to do it? No. Now, to be fair, Walmart's not the only retailer. Sears, Kmart, Toys R Us, and Target also plan to open up on Thanksgiving Day. But so far, we're told it's only the workers at Walmart that plan to protest. Reporting live from Dorte, Stephen Chase, KTLA 5 News. Let's okay. go live now to KTLA Stephen Chase. She's got the tales on all of that. Hello, Steph.
Hey, Rick. Yeah, we just finished talking with three LAPD officers on motorcycle patrol, and they told us they could not tell us the exact path that the president will be traveling on as he gets around downtown LA, saying that's classified information. But they did give us more details about some of the possible roads that may be affected around LA Live and the Nokia Theater. A tragedy tonight in Santa Fe Springs. Two boys ages 11 and 13 are killed after their father loses control of his car and slams into a power pole. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Sheriff Calvin. Stephen Chase is live at the scene with the latest on what happened. Stephen? Sharon and Micah, we just arrived about an hour ago to this tragic and horrible scene where these two boys were killed. And to give you an idea of how violent of a crash this was, the four-door sedan that was involved was basically sawed in half. Now, right behind the corner's uh, white SUV that we're looking at, that's where the front half of the car is. Now, and about 100 feet away is where the other half of the car is, right behind that light post that the car railed into. Now, unfortunately, an 11-year-old boy was ejected from the car. He was pronounced dead. The coroner has arrived to take his body off scene and a 13 year old who was riding in the passenger seat also killed the driver of this car who we believe is the boy's father is a 33 year old. He was taken to the hospital. Police tell us that he is in stable condition. Now police at this time don't know if drugs or alcohol were involved. They don't know if the driver was perhaps speeding or maybe uh, racing another vehicle. However, an eyewitness says that there were two vehicles driving extremely fast and that one car cut off the other one shortly after that. That second car lost control. That eyewitness then describes the dramatic and heartbreaking scene that quickly ensued after the crash. Police could be getting closer to finding the person who killed a Kansas City girl on the 4th of July. That is perfect. And you've got a whole line of breakfast sandwiches that you have here. Um, tell us about some of the other ones you've got. Sure, we've uh, go ahead. And they all smell so good. We've got our executive chef over here working hard. Let me tell you, it is heating up here in the kitchen. This is um, Chef Erin Wishon, yep. and she actually cooks for the um, for the Chiefs players. Yeah, she does all the uh, team feed. Uh, so she feeds all those guys. Uh, I got to ask you, Chef, how much fun is it working with the Chiefs and the players? It's great. It's a great organization to work for. We have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. What's your favorite sandwich to make right now? Uh, right now, out of these, I would have to say it's probably the jerk chicken. Okay. It's got a coconut toast, uh, a pineapple sauce with Captain Morgan. Uh, just very different than uh, your typical. Just so you have one right here for me now to yeah. taste? Okay, say that one for me because I'm going to eat it here in a second. Now, Brad, I want to come back over to you. Yes. Um, because, like I said, the food truck craze, I mean, it's a big deal right now. Absolutely. And it's going to be at the Chief Stadium. This is the first one. Yeah, so this is going to be the first yeah. one. You don't even need a ticket for this one. You don't need a ticket, but you need a napkin. You need a napkin. Probably a couple <laughs> napkins. Okay, now Chef Erin, she said that I should try the chicken. The jerk, the jerk chicken. chicken. The jerk chicken. What do you suggest? One, uh, the, the big jerk. By, the big by jerk. Bar. Okay, That's I'm going to go for one. it. Let's give it a try. Yeah. This looks good. Look at that. Oh, it's just ready for me. This is going to get messy. I'm sorry, Mom. Let's get something uh. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pretty good, right? That coconut on the outside, the pepper jack chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Aaron, you want a bite? No, I'm good. No. Okay. Eating on live TV is never a good idea. But you know, for the sake of our viewers at home, I wanted to do them a favor and let them know the experience is truly something special. Yes. Well, we got some more if you're still hungry. Hey, we appreciate that. Brad, thanks Thank for coming on. Chef Aaron Wishon, thank you so much. Hey, guys, we'll be right back. I'm going to enjoy more of the sandwich. Mmm, that is tasty. Yeah. Today I'm doing Maldiva <laughs> in Dior. Yeah, can we just show off these Chanel shoes that Chanel you have on? Chanel shoes for men. Amazing. There's only three on this planet. They're security put your, guards Put your leg me. up like this so well, everyone I am can very see. Can you do that? Right. Lisa, that's why you're my girl. Because you know that I love ice cream. It makes everything better. It and does. you know, it probably evens out the bitterness of, of the cranberries. It does. Okay. It does. It's a nice smooth. So I'll have you taste that later when we. Commercial break. It's exactly. right around the corner. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Lisa, thanks a lot. So. Nice. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Nothing big going on in terms of any major rain or mm -hmm. snowstorm. So. Right. And uh, usually when we're talking about snow, we're not talking about Texas. We're talking about us here yeah. at home. Yeah. El Paso, I think, now has had more snow than Chicago. Amazing. That is, that's yeah. a little quirky. Denver's had more snow this year already than they have last year for the entire winter season. So okay. some places getting it, but at least here in Kansas City, we certainly are not. Yeah, we're not. Hey, mm -hmm. Joe, thanks for the forecast. Okay. All right, well, are you having some trouble uh, making your gift choices this year? Fox 4 medical reporter Marilyn McCain has the presence that will help your loved ones with their fitness goals. 
Hey, and if you missed a previous cost cutter stories that you want to check out, you can go to our website at fox4kc.com, scroll over the news tab, and then click on cost cutters. In other news, overseas now and in Syria, a pair of homicide car bombings have killed at least 40 people. And now Syrian officials say al-Qaeda may be to blame. Fox's Leland Vitteret has the latest. Well, right now, crews are wrapping up after emergency drills at the Livestrong Sporting Park. Fox Force Kathy Quinn is working for you live from that location with more. Kathy.